So we are calling this video The Comeback because it is probably one of only two or three weeks in the year 2022 where I feel really good about my sales, which is sad, but I think it speaks to what a lot of us are going through right now, which is just rougher sales than we're used to in this time of year because of all the things going on in the world and with reselling platforms that we just have no control over. So I am gonna celebrate this win big time and I hope you celebrate with me by watching this video and learning what's sold for me. Stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a part-time reseller on a variety of platforms that you're gonna to get to hear about today in today's video, which is a what sold video, which means I talk about all of the things that sold for me over a week span, specifically for this video, in the week of April 11th through the 17th. I share with you where I picked up the item, how much I paid for the item, how much I made off of the item, all the stuff that is, I think, really helpful to know for other resellers, so that if you were to go into a thrift store yourself and see something along the lines of what I'm sharing with you today, you know either this is a really good pickup or mm, I can probably leave that behind because if I remember, Becky made $4 off of it. And also I think this video gives you a really good idea of where to list certain items if you're not already cross-listing, you know, everything on all the platforms that you sell on because there are some items or brands that do better on certain platforms. So with all that being said, let's jump right into it because a good number of items did sell this week. Um, you might also notice that I am in my glasses. Um, I did post on my Instagram and I've shared a lot on YouTube as well about how this eye is just like really messed up. I finally went to the eye doctor today and he said there's just some very like serious inflammation of the eye but like nothing else that he could find like no scratch on the cornea or anything like that. So I'm glad it's not anything huge and I gotta wrap this up so that I can stop by the pharmacy to pick up eye drops and then go to rehearsal for my school musical. So we're gonna start with sales from Monday, April 11th. The first one was this pair of Gap Kids blue polka dot denim pull-on joggers in a size eight. This is something that my daughter had in her drawers. So cute, she refused to wear them. I think she maybe wore them like once. So we went ahead and listed them. She took pictures for me. They sold for $10. That was an offer that I got, I believe. And so I made a profit of $7.05. Actually, she made a profit of $7.05, even though I did the hard work of listing, but she did take the pictures. So that goes, you know, half to her Robux for Ro what, Roblox, whatever that game is called, to that game that she plays. And also she's sending a good portion of the proceeds that she earns from taking pictures to uh, Ukrainian refugees, which I think is really sweet. So $7.05 for her. The next thing to sell was really exciting. Can you believe I've been reselling now for like, let's say I started in 2017. So, oh my God, like I'm coming up on five years, which is insane. But um, I, for the very first time, picked up this brand and it is Ariat. Ariat? Ariat. I'm not quite sure. But they are very popular cowboy boots. I've seen them before in the past. You know, I went through like three years where I just didn't pick up cowboy boots because I didn't believe that people wore them and that they made good money. Um, people do wear them and they do make good money. They sell for a lot. So I picked these up at a local consignment store, I believe. They were $7.50. They sold for $51 within like, I want to say 24 hours of me listing them. They sold on Poshmark. So once you factor in Poshmark's fees and my cost of goods, I made a profit on those boots of $31.58. So by by the time I figured out, ooh, cowboy boots are worth picking up, I'm also realizing that they are kind of expensive. You know, they're not like the cheapest thing to source because other people have figured out much quicker than I <laughs> that there is a lot of value in them. So brands like Ariat, I know like Justin's can do well, I and I'm not a cowboy boot connoisseur, obviously, because of everything that I just told you, but there are some really great brands. And if you wanna learn more about cowboy boots, I would recommend checking out a video that Amber from Amber Resells made on the topic, and I will link that video down below. But yeah, $31.58 of profit. We love to see it. The next thing to sell was by the brand DR2, which is like, I mean, it's Daniel Rain, and I don't know if it's like, a subset of Daniel Rain, or I don't know what it is, but it's Daniel Rain, which 
historically for me has not done super well. It tends to sit. This, however, sold pretty fast. It was a long sleeve romper and it had kind of this like kaleidoscope print on it. It was in a women's size medium. I got it when I bought out a local reseller's inventory because she is done with reselling and I only had a dollar and two cents into each item. The piece sold for $20, so I made a profit on that romper of $14.98. And that was one that I was kind of on the fence about. Like, do I list this? Do I, you know, try to consign it somewhere else? I'm glad that I listed it because like I said, it sold fairly quickly within a couple of weeks of being listed and I made almost $15 on it. Not bad. Oh boy, I had a great eBay day. So the first thing to sell on eBay was this pair of Skechers Shape Ups. They were like the work line. So there are some shoes through Skechers that they advertise as like work shoes. Like they have like the slip resistant bottom. Um, they're specifically for people who are gonna wear these suckers to work like every day, right? So these were in a black leather exterior. Um, they did have the slip resistant technology on the bottom. I don't know what size they were, but they were a certain size. <laughs> they sold for $50. I think that was an offer that I got. And to be honest, I had them listed like really high. I want to say like $75 for, for whatever reason. I, I don't think that Skechers Shape Ups need to be listed that high. For some reason, I thought these needed to be, but I sold them for 50. They were promoted at 3%. I had a dollar and 66 cents into those because I found them at the Goodwill outlet in Indianapolis. And so I made a profit of $34 and 26 cents. So already this Monday, shoes were really doing well for me. The next sale was even better. It was this Brooks Brothers khaki single breasted wool cashmere blend lined trench coat in a men's size. I think that says 48. Yeah, 48. I had this listed for like 125 and I remember when I was hauling it, I got it at a local thrift store and when I was hauling it, I was saying that I'd probably list it for like $50 or something because I hadn't looked up comps at that time yet. I mean, I had, but like very quickly. I looked them up at the store, but not like in depth. And a lot of you loved comments like, do not list that for $50. It is worth so much more. So I think I had it listed at like 125 or 115 or something like that. I got a $95 offer on it. And I accepted because it still left me with really great profits. So I had picked it up at a local thrift store for $9.74. It's a really great local thrift store that they price really well. They do price up on certain things, but everything is for the most part pretty fair. So I made a profit on that trench coat of $73.26. Brooks Brothers is a great mall brand. It's definitely more upscale than like a Banana Republic or you know something like that but it's similar it's predominantly career wear but they are using things like wool and cashmere things are priced very high and a lot of people who shop there you know like have money that's why they're there and you know swear by the quality and are just very loyal customers so when I saw that this was a Brooks Brothers piece and that it was something substantial like a trench coat I definitely paid up for it by paying the 974 and it paid off handsomely, I would say. So definitely if you see outerwear by Brooks Brothers, if it's priced well, I would definitely consider picking it up. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari and it was this cabby Western Paisley pin tuck pleated skirt in a size four. This was old cabby. This is definitely not a super trendy, modern, current piece, but it sold within a week of me listing it for $20. This is something that I got in a big wholesale lot that I purchased from a fellow reseller and my average cost of goods per item came out to $3.92. So I made a profit of $13.20, which isn't huge, but it's definitely more than I would have earned if I had, you know, tried to consign it or something like that. And like I said, I did not sit on it for a very long time at all. I have been having so much luck with cabbie lately. Just something to consider when you're at the thrift store and you're like, ugh, another cabbie piece. I don't know, I've been making good money off of it. And then the last thing to sell on this Monday was a Facebook Marketplace sale. So I had a ton, let's see, one, two, three, four different platforms represented in one day. And this was a pair of Danskos. They were the black leather slip-on clogs. This is like what Dansko is known for, is like their neutral, very basic, but very comfortable clogs. These were in a European size 40. They sold for $40. I had $5 into them, so I made a profit of $35. Now those I have been sitting on for a 
while. And, you know, dance goes, I have been sitting on longer and longer, I feel like. Every once in a while, they'll sell really quickly. But for the most part, I'm sitting on them for like close to half a year. I suppose if I were to drop the price on them dramatically, like if I were to list them for like $25, $30, they'd probably sell a lot faster. But knowing that I can still get north of $35, if I'm just patient, I tend to wait. And that's just my strategy. I also have been getting burned more by shoes just falling apart due to dry rot. Um, this particular pair did not, but the week before I had a pair of dance goes that went out and they fell apart on the buyer the second time that she wore them out. The same thing happened on a pair of Echo shoes that I just sold pretty recently. So I don't know. I'm definitely starting to be a little bit more weary of picking up dance go for those reasons. You have to sit on them longer and they've been falling apart on me. But yeah, like I said, four different reselling platforms are presented. That's only because of List Perfectly. You guys know how much I love this Chrome extension because it helps me cross list in bulk. It helps me track my inventory and creates sales analytics charts for me so I can see how I'm doing for the week, for the month, for the year. And they're just a great company. I just really love them to pieces. So if you would like to try out this perfectly to kind of level up and scale up your reselling business, I do have a coupon code. It is Becky Park. And if you use it, you can save 30% off of your first month of list perfectly. And I will have all of that linked for you down in the description below. Plus I'll link a playlist of all of my different List Perfectly tutorial videos because I think it can be a little overwhelming when you first start, but once you, you know, just keep using it and get used to it, that's how it is with everything, right? Like the more you grow accustomed to it, you'll start to realize that you're just kind of doing things off of muscle memory and it starts taking no time at all. So definitely a must have tool for reselling in my opinion. So moving on to April 12th, which is a Tuesday, on Poshmark, I sold this Reebok blue short sleeve workout shirt in a size small. That sold for $15. I made $12 off of that. I got it for free from someone at church, I believe. Sat on it for like a year or two, maybe. Reebok is not one of the better activewear brands out there. You can definitely pass on Reebok 99% of the time, unless you enjoy making $8 to $12 here and there. The next thing to sell was this pair of Nike Kids Air Jordan Legacy 312 um, off court sneakers in a size 2 youth. I got these at the Goodwill outlet as well. So I had $1.66 into these. They sold for $17, which is not huge. I probably could have waited to get a little bit more out of them, but I was just ready to move, especially shoes at this point. So I made a profit of $11.94. And I've probably had those listed for at least half a year. And then over on eBay, I had another great shoe sale. It was this pair of Orvis Brown wading boots with like a felt bottom. They are for fly fishing, which I learned from when I hauled them and a lot of you left just super helpful comments letting me know why they were so weird on the bottom literally felt on the bottom um, and they were in a men's size 11. By the way can I just take a moment to appreciate all of you who do very consistently leave such helpful information in the comments. I've been at this for a long time but by no means do I know everything like not even close. I'm learning every day about reselling and reselling is one of those things that continues to evolve as fashion evolves especially Especially if you are a clothing reseller, um, there's just no way that you can know everything about everything. And I will never pretend that I do. So those of you who do drop your knowledge down in the comments below, every time I do a haul video or every time I ask questions, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I would behoove you as a viewer to spend time in the comments of reseller videos because there is so much knowledge, not from me, but from other people within the reselling community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But back to these fly fishing shoes. They sold for $59.90. That was an offer that I sent out to buyers. It was promoted at 3%. It was an international sale. I don't know where it ended up going, but I did see that it was an international sale that went through the global shipping program, which means I didn't have to deal with the headache of figuring out how to ship it overseas, but I just had to ship it to the global shipping program headquarters in Kentucky, and they kind of took care of the rest. I had $7.50 cents into the item and so I made a profit of $37.39 on those. Orvis is a good outerwear brand, activewear brand. Um, it's very hit or miss for me, but seeing as how these were like very specific shoes and in a bigger size, I knew that these would do well and I'm happy that they did. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari. So this was a three platform day. It was this new tags foundry gray striped short sleeve t-shirt in a size four extra large tall. 
lots of great things going for it in the sense that it was 4XL and tall, which means it's going to be longer in length. Foundry itself is not the greatest brand. I think that it sold at like JCPenney or something like that. Um, but the only reason that I went ahead and listed it was because of the fact that it was the size that it was and because it was new with tags. So this sold on Mercari for $12. I hit $3.79 into it because it came to me in my most latest men's thread up rescue box, which ended up being a really good box. This was not one of the highlights of that box. If you want to see what I got in that box, I will link it down below. But I made a profit of $8.21 on that shirt. So, you know, especially if I get something in like a thread up box and I have paid up for it, if you will, I'm more inclined to list it because I want to at least make my money back. And obviously I made more than just my money back. I made, you know, like almost three times my money. But that's the thing about thread up boxes. Sometimes you get some really great pieces, but interspersed within the great pieces are, you know, bread and butter filler pieces like this. So moving on to April 13th, which was a Wednesday on Poshmark, I sold this new with tags express Asian floral satin long sleeve bodysuit in a size extra small. I picked this up at a local consignment store. They were having a sale on a certain color tag. Um, my average cost of goods for that trip was $5 and six cents. I remember picking this up and being like, this is beautiful. It's going to sell for so much, even though it's express. So let me pick it up. I've had this for, I want to say close to two years at this point, and it sold for $18. I've gotten a few offers on this during its lifespan in my Poshmark closet and eBay store, and I would even guess that I probably have gotten offers higher than 18, but I had it listed at 35, and I was like, I'm going to get close to 35 for this. No, like not even close. People probably laughed when they saw my listing. It sold for $18. I made a profit of $9.34 after close to two years. Don't be like me. Don't price up just because you think something is cute. Really look at the comps. And if I had done that, comps would have told me, Girl, you are not getting anywhere close to $35 for this thing. The next thing to sell was another Brooks Brothers piece. It was this Stellita Fit Brown Blazer in a size 12 Petite. This is another item that I had priced so Hi. And I mean, to some degree, I think it warranted the high price. I think it was 100% leather. It was nice. It was in a bigger size, even though it was a petite piece. Um, I think I had it listed for like 50 on all the platforms and it would always get like some interest and it'd get like really low ball offers. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to wait for someone to buy it full out at my 50. It never happened. So when I got a $32 offer on this on Poshmark, you better believe I hit accept so fast. Cause again, I think I've had this for like two years. I probably had about $5 into it. It's so old that it's before I was actually keeping track of my cost of goods. So I'm going to guess $5. So we're guessing that I made a profit of $20.60. By the way, one thing I hate about filming in my glasses is that you can see the ring lights in my glasses and my glasses are just like really dirty. Like I'm just always looking through smudges. And I don't know how to get them clean. They just won't get clean. Anyway, you don't care about any of that. Moving on to eBay. On eBay, I sold this Urban Outfitters BDG, which is an Urban Outfitters house brand, black short sleeve romper in a size small. I have had this forever. I want to say close to like two and a half years. I think I got this for free from a friend. It sold for $7. It was promoted at 3%. So I made a profit of $6.05. Urban Outfitters, most of their stuff just does not have super high resale value. Even though I feel like it is priced atrociously high in the store, most of their stuff just does not sell for that much. Um, you know, uh, Urban Outfitters is related to free people, related to anthropology, and it's definitely like the lowest tier of the three. It just, yeah, it's usually not worth picking up. The next thing to sell was this Vineyard Vines pink madras plaid, 100% cotton shorts in a men's size 30. These actually sold for my full asking price and I thought I priced it way too high, but my full asking price of $34.99. It was promoted at 3%. I only had a dollar and two cents into them because I got it as part of that big local reseller buyout. So I made a profit on those shorts of $28.48, which I would have never thought was the case. Like I sold that for more and made more on that than I did that Brooks Brothers blazer. 
there's something that seems really wrong about that. But also when you look at seasonality, it makes sense that a pair of shorts in this like Madras plaid print would do better than a wool blazer. So, you know, that's definitely something to take into consideration as well when you're listing and pricing is what is the current season? What are people shopping for at the moment? The next day that we'll talk about is April 14th, which is a Thursday. The first thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of Vans. They had like a unicorn and cupcake print all over them. They were a low top shoe in a size five and a half for women's. I have had these for basically two years as well. Um, I got them at a local consignment store when they let me do a big bulk buy and shop in their storage unit by myself during the stay at home orders. And so, you know, we kept it really safe by just me being the only one in there. I would like pick up the key from the owners. Actually, no, they would just leave it unlocked knowing that I was going to go there. Um, and then I would lock up after because it was literally one of those like you know, just master lock, you put the key in. Um, yeah, it was really amazing, like such an amazing opportunity, but it worked out for both of us because they needed the business since they couldn't, you know, open their store during the stay at home orders and I needed the product. So it worked out beautifully. I had a dollar and 80 cents into these. And after two years, they finally sold for $19 and I made my profit of $13 and 40 cents. I just had to wait forever. A lot of people say that Vans sells so well for them. I cannot sell Vans to save my life. Like, it'll always eventually sell. I don't feel like I'm overpricing my Vans. I don't know what is wrong with me and Vans, but I can't sell it. If you know the secret sauce behind selling Vans, please tell me in the comments below because I, I can't seem to do it. The next thing to sell was this Banana Republic gray 100% merino wool. So kind of out of the season, but I'll take it. Button up sweater for men in a size small. This sold for $29. I had it listed for 35 I believe, and I sold that with discounted shipping of $1.72 because of Posher VA. Posher VA is a different Chrome extension that I use. You know, it's different from List Perfectly, but what this one does is it shares your Poshmark closet for you. It does things like send out offers and like a ton of other things. Um, so I have it send out offers for me like four or five minutes after someone likes an item, and I like that because then I don't have to sit there and babysit my closet and my likes and be as responsive as you should be to to, you know, have the most success on a platform like Poshmark. So um, after I relisted this, I believe, using an app called Seller Insight, someone liked the item, Posh VA sent out the offer and I made the sale. I had $2.99 into that item because I picked it up at a local thrift store. I made a profit of $18.49 and I think that's the power of the bread and butter brand. The next thing to sell was over on eBay. It was this new with tags, Eloquy, which is, I want to say... Is that the is that the one related to Lane Bryant or Torrid? It's one of those. I can't remember. I want to say Lane Bryant, but mm, or is it Torrid? I don't know. But it's like one of those. And this was a blocked striped long sleeve dress with blue and black stripes in a plus size 20. It was promoted at 3%. And this is something that I picked up at a pop-up consignment store that I am so excited to shop today. Today is the opening day pre-sale. I'm going after my musical rehearsal because they're going to be open till 10. So I'm not going to be like one of the first people in, but hopefully they still have some great stuff. So my average cost of goods for this particular day was $9.96. I sold the item for $33. It actually went to the Virgin Islands, which was really cool. Um, but because of of my cost of goods. And because I had to pay more for shipping than what I had charged, I actually only made a profit of $9.56 on that item, which is not amazing, but you know, it is what it is. The next thing to sell was this pair of new in the box Converse All-Star high top pink lace-up sneakers in like a infant size two. This sale I'm kind of irritated by. Um, I'll explain why. It sold, they sold for $14. They, like I said, were new in the box. And this person originally, I think offered me like 10 and we kept going back and forth and she kept being like can you just do something about shipping and I was like no like someone has to pay for shipping and I don't want to be that person so we finally settled on $14 which was like $20 all in for her you know for shipping and stuff this is an item that I'm selling on consignment for a consignment client so I do have some people at my church who just want to get rid of stuff when they're not wearing it anymore and they'll just give it to me for free you hear me talk about them a lot um, but I also have a few friends at church who you know they want like a few bucks for their stuff and I get that so for this particular person she 
actually gave me some really good stuff. Like she was giving me like Red Valentino boots and like, I don't know, just really good high-end stuff like Mark by Marc Jacobs bags and watches and things like that. Um, so I said, you know, once something sells, I will give you half of the profit that I make off of that item. So because this sold for $14, my profit ended up being, I can't remember exactly how much, but she's getting $6.52 and I'm getting $6.52. So my cost of goods, if you want to call it that, is $6.52. Um, but what irritated me about the sale isn't just that the person like lowballed me and we had to keep going back and forth. But what irritated me about the sale is that I forgot to delete it right away. Like I think it sold at night and I was like, I'm, you know, about to go to sleep. I'll deal with it in the morning when it comes to deleting it. Of course, it sold on Mercari the next day for $20, which is much better than $14. And that's with, you know, the buyer paying for shipping and Mercari's fees are less. And this ended up selling to someone who lived in Hawaii. So I had to pay a little bit extra for shipping because Hawaii is much farther away than any other state basically in the United States. So I would have made a handful more dollars if I had just stood my ground and, you know, didn't go as low as $14 on those new in the box shoes, but it is what it is. The sale was done. So I just, you know, stuck by that original eBay sale and had to cancel the Mercari one, which sucks, but that's why you got to delete your listings very quickly. And that's why I'm so excited because List Perfectly is coming out with an update on List Perfectly where if something sells on one platform, they will automatically delete it on all of the other platforms that it's listed on. Someone asked me, how does that work on Poshmark if let's say something sells on eBay, but you have some offers on an item on Poshmark, how is this perfectly gonna deal with that? I don't know, the answer is I don't know, but I will find out and I will try to let you know. So over on Mercari, I sold this pair of Nike black white trophy training tights in a size youth medium. These sold for $15. These were so cool. My daughter never wore them and they ended up getting too small on her. So she photographed them. I listed them. They sold and we made a profit of $12.76. That was a really great sale. Moving on to Friday, which was April 15th. So Friday started off with a really great bundle sale. I don't think this went to a viewer because, you know, whoever it was didn't say anything. If it did, thank you so much. Much. I feel like bundle sales typically tend to be viewers, but um, this was a great bundle. I saw that they liked the three items. So I went ahead and put them in a bundle, sent her my lowest offer on them with discounted shipping. So the first item was this pair of Skechers. They were the Skechers Delights, biggest fan work shoes in like a gray and pink colorway in a women's size 10. I haven't talked about this in a while because I feel like these sizes in shoes haven't sold in a while, but women's bigger shoe sizes like 10 and 11 have been selling so well for me. Um, but these, I only had a dollar and 27 cents into why? I don't remember where I got these, but my cost of goods was really low. I actually think I got them at the Goodwill bins now that I think about it. The next thing to sell was this Free People Lexington Floral Off the Shoulder Top in a size medium. That one I had $8.17 into. I believe I got that at one of those pop-up consignment sales and that was my average cost of goods that day. And then the last thing in the bundle was this Nick and Zoe Beige Long Line Cardigan with like tied sleeves in a size small. That one I had $0.80 into because I got it as part of that big bulk buy when I was able to go into that storage unit of that consignment store and my average cost of goods for clothing from that consignment store was 80 cents. So all in all I had $10.24 into this bundle. The bundle sold for $80 with $2.68 off of shipping. I believe I sent the offer and you know I didn't get like the sale right away so I just assumed that they you know, we're going to ignore it. But then when I woke up the next morning is when I saw that the sale had gone through. And so I made a profit on those three items of $51.08. I don't sell too many bundles, but I did have a couple bundle sales this week. And that's always super exciting to me. The next thing to sell was this Life is Good gray t-shirt. It was like the semi-fitted fit. And it said, keep it simple on the front. It was in a men's size extra large. This sold for $21 with discounted shipping because this was also a Posher VA sale. So they sent out the offer on my behalf. If you wanted to try out Pasha VA, by the way, I do have a coupon code for that as well. It is also just Becky Park and it allows you to save 20% off of your first payment on Pasha VA. So if you wanted to try that out, I'll have that link down in the description below as well. But I made a profit on that of $15.53 and that came from the same Indianapolis Goodwill outlet trip as the Sketcher Delights 
work shoes. Yeah. The next thing to sell was this new with tags, BKE standard fit black full zip linen blend hooded vest in a men's size medium. This actually was the liner to a jacket I learned. And I learned that by looking at the label and it was describing what the vest portion was made out compared to the jacket. And I was like, oh, there's no jacket. So I guess this is just, this is just kind of independent of that. And somehow it lost its, um, jacket counterpart, but I had it listed for 35. I got an offer of 25, which I happily accepted because I got this as part of that reseller buyout. So I only had a dollar and two cents into it. I still made a profit of $18 and 98 cents. And really one of the biggest lessons that I've taken away from that reseller buyout is that buckle does really well. And when I say really well, like let's, you know, let's be honest, I'm not talking like $50 profit, but buckle sells quickly and it typically garners at least a $15 profit. So man, the number of buckle pieces I have passed on is kind of tragic now that I understand how well it can do. But yeah, that's one of the cool things about buying things in bulk and just kind of being forced to try brands that you typically pass on at the thrift store. The next thing to sell was over on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I know I talked about you know, echoes that fell apart. This was not them, but this was a pair of echo black leather derby lace up dress shoes in a men's size European 44. These sold for $30 on Facebook marketplace. I had $7.99 into them from a local thrift store. And so my profit on those was $19 and 88 cents. I feel like there was a time when I was picking up a lot of echo because I was hearing so many great things about it and none of it was selling. And then within a two week span, all of it sold. So my echo pieces just kind of like woke up all of a sudden. It, it's the strangest thing. Um, but yeah, for a while I was like, I'm not going to pick up echo anymore. Like, I don't know how these people are able to sell it so well. And now I get it. Like it's starting to move for me. The next thing to sell was this Nike pro combat dry fit fitted gray sleeveless athletic top. This sold for $20. Again, I had a dollar and two cents into it because I got it from the reseller buyout. So I made a profit of $17.78. So again, I did not delete this right away because I think it sold at like night or something. And then it sold the next day on eBay. And I was like, I've had this listed for so long and not so long, but like a couple months. How come now it has to sell two times in the span of 24 hours when it could have sold you know, so much, I don't know. It was just so frustrating, but I reached out to the eBay person and something that I do on eBay, because if you cancel too many sales because you, you know, sold it somewhere else or because you can't find the item or something, those all act as dings against your account. And if you get too many dings, you start dropping in your status. So like right now I'm a top rated seller. Is that what it's called? I'm not like the top, top, top. Cause I think in order to be that one, you have to like offer free shipping and free returns and all this kind of stuff. But I'm like the highest you can be without offering all those things. Um, but you start to dip and you'll go to like, you know, I don't even know what the different tiers are. I think there's like above average, average, you know, stuff like that. Um, but you dip when you have too many dings on your account. Like if you're shipping things out later than what you say you will. Um, if you have too many sales that you have to cancel if you don't close out returns in a timely manner. Um, so one thing that I do if I do make an error like that is I'll reach out to the buyer and I'll say, hey, I'm so sorry, this actually sold somewhere else and you purchased it before I could delete it. Um, you know, the item probably sold on eBay for around $20 as well. So what I said to him was, um, if you want, obviously I can cancel the transaction and you'll get all of your money back. Or you can look in my store and see if there's something else you would prefer, you know, up to a $30 amount. So I'm letting him get something a little bit more expensive. Typically, the person will just say, you can go ahead and cancel the transaction because they don't want to take the time to look through my store to see if there's anything else that they want. Probably they just really wanted that one piece and they don't really need to look around for anything else. And so when I go to cancel the sale, I can choose as my reason why that the buyer asked to cancel because they did when I gave them the choice of, do you want to cancel or do you want to pick out something else? They say, can you just cancel the sale? So I do, I don't get a ding on my account. And when the buyer sees that I canceled because they asked me to cancel, they're not going to be like, what? Like, that's a lie because, you know, they'll remember the conversation that we had. So that's just one little tip to, you know, kind of protect yourself from different dings and whatnot. And it stinks that that happens every once in a while. I just have to be better about deleting listings, but 
you know, soon that's not even going to be an issue with List Perfect Lease Update. So this was also a great day because I got my payout for the real real. So the way that the real real works is you get your payout once a month, and I think it's always on the 15th of the month, and that's for everything that sold, you know, in the month prior. And so technically this amount is for the sales that happened in March, but I was getting my payout in April on April 15th. So I'll just count them as my April numbers. But in the month of March, I sold nine items on the real real and I got a payout of $524, which is amazing. And I still have not made a real real video yet. Maybe I'll do like two months worth of um, what sold for a video or something because I definitely don't sell enough in a week to share with you on a weekly basis what is selling over there. I don't find very many luxury items in my area, but I will definitely make a video soon with just like the few lessons that I've learned about how to sell on the real real. So of those nine items, like I said, $524 was my payout. However, I did have obviously a cost of goods with each of those items. So for those nine items, I had a cost of goods of $93.05. So basically almost $10 an item as my cost of goods. So my actual net profit on those nine pieces was $403.95, which I think for a month on the real real from someone who doesn't even find that many luxury pieces, I think that's pretty awesome. And I definitely look forward to continuing to send them stuff. I haven't had any horrible experiences yet. I know some of you have told me in the comment section that you have sweet worn off the real real for whatever reason and you are entitled to do that but I have not had any reasons to have to do anything like that yet and let's hope that it stays that way. So moving on to April 16th, which was a Saturday, the first thing to sell on Poshmark was this Chico's Pink Floral Non-Iron 100% Linen Shirt in a size 16. That sold for $21 because of Posh VA, so there was also discounted shipping on that. I picked that up for $1 at a local consignment store because they were having a crazy clearance tag sale, and so I made a profit of $14.08 on that. Chico's is not like my favorite brand in the world, but it is a really consistent and solid bread and butter brand. Um, and with it being, you know, 100% linen, it was a no-brainer and in a plus size. I was like, yep, I'm going to pick it up for a dollar. Like, absolutely. The next thing to sell. Okay, so this, I think, is the Echo shoes that a case was opened, you know, up on me for. I don't know what the verdict is yet. The case was actually opened on Saturday. It's Monday today. So I don't know if Poshmark is gonna approve it or not. I personally didn't even bother to comment on the case because there's nothing that I can say that will really sway it one way or another. If you look at the pictures, there's no sign of you know, any wear or like this, any beginnings of the shoes starting to fall apart. They look like they're in great condition. When I ship them out, they appear to be in great condition. No one has any reason to think from, you know, me handling them to the pictures that they're going to fall apart on the buyer in that first wear. So I don't know what they're going to say if they say that, you know, they accept the case. If the case gets accepted in the buyer's favor, I mean, it stinks, but it is what it is. And that's the cost of doing business. So, you know, I'll get them back. I won't be able to sell them if they have indeed fallen apart in the way that the buyer described and showed pictures of. So, you know, it's a loss, but sometimes that happens. And, you know, what can you do? So, as of now, I'll give you my numbers for it because maybe the case won't go through. I don't know. But the shoes sold for $27. I had $6 into them, so I made a profit of $15.60. But maybe that $15.60 will be ripped out of my bank account. I don't know. On eBay, I sold this Eliza J green lace sleeveless shift dress in a size 12. That sold for my full asking price of $39.99. It was promoted at 3%. I had $6.50 into it from a local consignment store. So I made a profit of $28.97. I have also kind of been thinking to myself that I'm going to cool down on picking up Eliza J only for it to like do really well for me lately. So I don't know, like I guess maybe it is a brand I will continue to pick up. However, one style of dress from Eliza J that I have seen sit longer than others is the kind of like 
jersey knit dress. I feel like that's one of the things that they're really well known for, but that's the style of dress that hasn't been selling for me. Whereas these like lacy dresses or like I had um, a, a pantsuit or like a jumpsuit sell not too long ago, those kinds of things are what have been selling. Um, so maybe it just kind of depends on the style, but as a brand, I've still been having really good luck with Eliza J. The next thing to sell on eBay, I was so happy about. It was by the brand Roller Rabbit. And I think that this particular piece was actually sold at Anthropology. It was this teal gauzy medallion Marquette jumpsuit in a size extra large. This sold for $69.99. I had a dollar and two cents into it because it came in that reseller buyout. So I made a profit of $58.87 holy cow so i did an unboxing of the stuff that i got from this local reseller and she actually like messaged me on instagram after watching it herself and watching me unbox all of her old inventory and she was like that piece that roller rabbit jumpsuit because i had commented in the video of how it seemed so fun and so cute and so comfortable and she was like that was one of my favorite pieces to wear for myself um but i just you know i'm done with it and i'm so happy to move it on to you and have you sell it and i was so happy to get such a high price for it almost like in her honor you know what i mean it was one of her like favorite pieces and i'm so happy that now it's in someone else's life hopefully making someone else just as happy so that was a great sale with a great profit margin and roller wrap it from anthropology be on the lookout by the way i know that there's been a lot happening in the reseller community in terms of ebay and getting banned from ebay and people who have been getting banned from ebay and all that kind of stuff and someone actually commented in my last video which was a what sold video where i do exactly this and i show you know screen videos of what sold for me and clearly i do use some stock photos um even on ebay and i have gotten vero'd for that before and it's one of those things it's one of the downfalls of list perfectly which is that when i create my listing and then i push it out i don't always remember to pull down my stock photos from places like eBay and stuff. Um, but it's something that I plan on doing in the very, very near future is just like looking at my eBay store, looking at all of my listings that have stock photos as the cover photo and removing those because yeah, you can get in serious trouble from eBay for doing that. Um, a lot of companies you know, follow eBay very closely to see who's using their stock photos and they will snitch on you and they have every right to, to be honest, if you are going to use stock photos. And I feel like I use them pretty sparingly. Like I definitely used it for this piece because this piece looked crazy on the hanger, but I do use them sparingly because really like as resellers, we should be using our own pictures. That's just how it is. And I do always make sure to like have my own pictures in all of my listings as well. It always amazes me that some people will only use stock photos in their listing. They won't even have pictures of the actual item that they have in their possession for sale. Um, and they'll still make sales that way. Like that boggles my mind, but I am going to go through and just clean up my eBay store so that I don't get vero'd, so that I don't get banned, you know, for all those different reasons. eBay is fickle and eBay is very low tolerance for, like I said earlier, things like dings, things like, you know, you using certain words, um, in your listing titles for you using stock photos. So you do have to be really careful and you do have to play by their rules. And that's definitely something that I'm trying to be even more conscious of, you know, with everything going on. I'm not a perfect reseller. Like I shared earlier, there's still a lot that I don't know, but even some of these things that I should know better, I should know better and I'm trying to do better. And that's why I'm trying to like go through and make the time to clean things up and be a better example for you guys too. And if ever you have felt like I'm not a good example or I've led you astray or something, I'm very, sorry. I promise I'm not trying to do it intentionally, um, but I'm just trying to do my best and share my journey with you. So the last day that we'll talk about, you guys, I have my phone next to me and it just I just keep seeing all of these different notifications and alerts. I keep getting distracted, but my prescription is ready is what that was about. So we're going to get through these bajillion sales from Sunday as quickly as possible. Sunday, April 17th, the first thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of lands and traditional fit cuffed khakis in a size. 40. I saw these in the reseller buyout when I was going through the inventory. They were not my favorite. I was not excited about them by any means, 
but they sold for $25 and I only had a dollar and two cents into them. So I made a profit of $18 and 98 cents. That was my full asking price was $25. So even though I wasn't excited about it, I listed it and I made close to $20 on it. That's why, you know, in this video right here, and I'll link it down below too, where I talk about how to tackle your death pile. I personally give the advice that you don't need to go by what excites you the most. Just go off of whatever is at the top of your death pile. Take that item, photograph it, list it, and keep on moving. And what will be encouraging to you will be seeing that pile go down and seeing that money make its way into your bank account, which it cannot do if you're waiting to get excited about the crap in your death pile. For some pieces, it's just not going to happen. This was one of those pieces, but I went ahead and listed it anyway and made close to $20. The next thing to sell is another great example of that. It was by the brand Nobility and it was this graphic crew neck short sleeve t-shirt of like Miami. Like I think it had, yeah, a picture of Miami on it with the word Miami. Um, it was part of the reseller buyout as well. So I had a dollar and two cents into it. So I made a profit of $7 and three cents, which again, I'll take it. The next thing to sell was this gray striped long sleeve ruched athletic shirt. They had cuffins, which is a term that I feel like McThrift C has taught all of us. It's like the thumb holes. So I did use the word cuffins here. Um, it was in a size 2XL, which I just figured out by taking measurements because this piece had not a single tag on it anywhere. It was not a Lululemon piece. It didn't have like the little Lululemon logo or anything, but it, I don't know what the brand was. I was not excited about listing it, but I still did because I only had a dollar and two cents into it from the local reseller buyout. It sold for $15, which I think was a closet clear out sale. And so I made a profit of $10.98 and it was listed for under a week. So even if something has no brand, no information, doesn't mean you can't make the sale, and this is proof of that. The next thing to sell was a bundle. It had four things in it, a couple of which I was so happy to get rid of. Like they were old pieces, pieces that I had zero confidence <laughs> would ever sell, but they did. So the first thing to sell, I knew would sell eventually, was this pair of Talbot's Heritage pink slim ankle jeans in a size four. I got those for $1 at that consignment sidewalk sale. Um, the next thing to sell was this pair of Bowden red straight leg dress pants in a size six. I had 80 cents into those because I got them at the big bulk buy at that local consignment store when I shopped in their storage unit. The next thing to sell, I was like, this is never gonna sell. It was by the brand Mossimo, which I just learned from one of you in the comments is the guy married to Becky from Full House who like, they like went to jail or whatever because of the college admissions scandal, right? So I guess that's why Target dropped him. Um, but I didn't know that that was like an actual person, Massimo, and that's the person that Laurie Laughlin is married to. Anyways, um, it was this pair of high rise mauve raw hem, I don't know why I'm talking like that, mauve raw hem skinny jeans in a size four. These came to me in a thread of rescue box and I was not excited about them in the least still listed them. Um, I had, I think $3 into those. And then the last thing to sell was this Banana Republic black merino wool blend boat neck sweater in a size small. That one, I believe I got for free from a friend at church. And that one, I just had no confidence in its ability to sell, not because I thought it was a bad piece, but because the pictures just looked awful and I did not want to take the time to retake them. I think that there was like something on my lens. And so all of the pictures were like kind of blurry and the coloring was really off. And I was like, like I'm just gonna leave it. I don't care. Thankfully, it sold in this bundle. I believe these four items were like hanging out in a bundle. I sent the buyer an offer of $65 with discounted shipping. They accepted. I had $4.80 into that bundle, so I made a profit of $44.52, and I was very thankful. The next thing to sell was this loft blue and white polka dot elastic waist romper in a size 18. That sold for $20. I had about $3 into that, and it sold due to closet clear out. I do have this thing that I do every closet clear out whenever I get a like, and I will link that video down in the description below if you wanna learn about how I utilize that closet clear out promotion to actually make sales. I know for some people, they hate closet clear out, but I made a profit of $13 on that. And the best thing about that was, it was sitting in my death pile for forever because the sleeve hem had come undone. And so the last time that we went to my mother-in-law's place, I actually took that and a few other pieces to her house because she's a 
great seamstress and she fixed it for me. I was able to list it and it sold within a couple of days being listed, which was really exciting. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was another closet clear out sale and it was this cottage core rust v-neck smocked maxi dress in a size small. This is another piece that had no brand. There were hardly any tags on it, but I still listed it because it was a really cute dress and it sold for $20 using my closet clear out method. I had a dollar and two cents into it because it came from the local reseller buyout and so I made a profit of $14.98 and best of all that went to a viewer named Summer. So Summer, I hope you love the dress. I hope that you get to wear it all summer long and that you love it. So thank you so much for your support. And then we end this video with a few eBay sales. Um, the first one was this J. Crew collection red pleated high rise ankle pants in size two. Those sold for $26. I had $5 into them, so I made a profit of $18.11. J. Crew collection is like the top tier of J. Crew. However, that does not mean that it's going to sell for a whole lot. However, in my experience, I have learned that it does not sell for a whole lot. And uh, furthermore, these particular pants had a pretty big stain on them, which is why they took even longer to sell. So um, I made my profit of $18.11 and I learned to be much more careful about looking at clothes for stains. The next thing to sell was this Free People Hard It Laces Teal V-neck sweater tunic and it had like a lace-up feature, I think on the sides, in a size small. That sold for my full asking price of $39.99. It was promoted at 3%. I had $5.14 into it from a local consignment store, so I made a profit of $29.49. I have had that listed for quite a long time, and I believe I relisted it on eBay, which is what sparked the sale. So if you have listings that are really stale on eBay, go ahead and end those listings, and then you can sell similar, and it'll show up as a new listing on eBay which is probably gonna help you make the sale. So that's what I did for the sweater and I think that's why it sold. The last thing to sell was this Sigrid Olsen Pink Silk Blend Floral Applique Top in a size small. That sold for $2.99 because of eBay auctions. I have some pieces that I've just had forever and I just, I just need them gone. And so I ended up making a profit of $2.02 .02 on that item after having it in my house for just a really long time. I think that that was something that my mother-in-law gave me back when I first started reselling. It was something that no one else was super interested in, but that's okay. We finally moved it. So let's talk numbers really quickly. On Poshmark, I sold 25 items for a gross sales amount of $541. Once you factor in Poshmark's 20% fees, any shipping discounts that I offer, that sort of thing, that total drops to $420.58. I had $56.44 as my cost of goods, and so I made a profit of $364.14. That's the amount that made its way into my bank account. On eBay, I sold 12 items for a gross sales amount of $472.85. Once you factor in eBay's fees, you know, there are some extra fees too for like international sales and things like that. That total drops to $387.04. My cost of goods for the 12 items on eBay was $54.05. And so I made a net profit of $332.99. On Mercari, I sold three items for a gross sales amount of $47. Once you factor and Mercari's fees, that total drops to $41.88. I had $7.71 as my cost of goods on Mercari, and so my net profit on Mercari was $34.17. On Facebook Marketplace, I also sold three items, and man, on Facebook Marketplace, I actually um, made more money than on Mercari. So my gross sales amount was $90. Once you factor in Facebook Marketplace's fees, that total drops to $81.67. My cost of goods for those three items was $14.01, and so I made a profit of $67.96. I sold nine items on the real reel, and so my payout was $524, my cost of goods was $93.05, and my net profit was $403.95. So in total, I sold 52 items, which technically, like, the nine real reel items did not sell in this month, but like I said we're just including that information in here too but my gross sales amount was $1,674.85 once you factor in shipping and fees that total drops to $1,455.17 I had a cost of goods of $225.26 and so my net profit for the week was $1,229.91 which is what 
we want to see. My goal for every week is like $833. And I have been falling short of that goal by so much in the past, I don't even know how many weeks. Like I said, I think I've really only met my goal once or twice this whole year. And that's the goal that I need to meet if I wanna make my year long goal of $40,000 in net by the end of the year. I'm way behind on that, um, but we're just going to keep trucking. We're just going to keep doing our best. Um, this next couple weeks is insanely busy for me because next week is the musical at my school. So this is tech week and it's just all kinds of craziness. So I have a feeling these next couple weeks, my numbers are going to be pretty crummy as well, but all you can do is your best. That's all I can do is my best. And that's what I'm going to keep doing um, in the allotted time that I have. And I'm not going to beat myself up over it. So I'm thankful for this amazing week. I'm going into the next couple weeks knowing that it's not going to be as good as this was, and that's okay. I'm going to show myself grace. I'm going to just do the best that I can in the other arenas of my life as well as reselling and be okay with the results. So that is it for today's video. I know it was kind of a long one, but if you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, subscribe, do all of the things, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!